with their weather now encouraging outdoor dining, we thought we'd ask our guest chef Sylvester Nair to take the good old bride to a new level. And now he's going to show us how. As a South African, I have many fond memories around a fire, whether it's camping in the great outdoors or surrounded by family and friends at a braai. Being proudly South African, the braai has evolved over the years to take many shapes and forms. And today, Sylvester Nye is going to show me how to braai in style. Sylvester, take it away. The stage is yours. So we're going to do some nice dishes today. To start, we're going to do a nice crayfish dish, which I've sous vide for a couple of hours, so nice and delicate. I'm gonna finish it off on the braai. I'm gonna do some sous vide heavy loom tomatoes on the braai as well. Some grilled gorgettes, a little bit of garlic and ginger with that, and we're gonna finish it with some pea tendrils and rocket. Touch of truffle oil, my favorite ingredient. <laughs> I'm sure everybody knows that. And uh, after that, I'm gonna do some tikka lamb and a tandoori chicken that's also been sous vide for about five hours. I'm so glad that you mentioned the crayfish and the veggies because being a pescatarian, I often find it so hard to find something to eat when I'm at a braai. What veggies in particular are conducive to braai? Anything succulent, so especially baby butternuts, courgettes, even big black mushrooms on the braai, as opposed to eating just butternut with cheese on it. And besides the crayfish over here, what fish lends itself to the braai? I would say anything with white meat and also more fleshy fish, so king clip, sea bass, cape salmon. Okay, so what's first? So we're gonna start with the crayfish first. I'm just gonna crack it open. I stuffed it with a little bit of lemongrass inside, which I've removed. You'll be able to smell that when I open it. The lemongrass is infused with the flesh of the crayfish, hence I didn't crack it. Straight in there, and everything's nice and soft. soft. So, oh, okay. wow. so you need to just remove, just to add a bit of an Indian twist, I'm going to just put a touch of cumin over that. And why cumin over any other spice? It's a delicate spice as well, it has a nice strong smell more than the flavour and it's not going to change the, the crayfish too much. Also with the lemongrass, it'll infuse nicely and once it's on the grill, nice flames going in there and a bit of butter as well. So I'm just going to pop that straight on. Okay, so what's next? So we're gonna get ready with our heavy loom tomatoes, which I've also sous vide. You've mentioned sous vide a couple of times now. What exactly is a sous vide? Sous vide is basically a hot tub for food. So basically you, you set the sous vide at a simple temperature or a desired temperature. Preferably for meat, you would go about 55 degrees. For chicken, 74 upwards. And for fish, between 64 and 70 as well. The fun part about a sous vide is that it remains at that temperature for no matter how long you leave it there. So I've left the tomatoes at 74 degrees for about three hours. So basically what happens is the tomato gets cooked all the way through on the inside, but still remains fleshy on the outside. So it looks completely uncooked. How long would we keep the tomatoes and the crayfish on the braai for? The tomatoes just to warm up on the outside and the crayfish for about five to 10 minutes cause it's been sous vide already. I'm just gonna pop these straight on. That already smells so good. Now I'm gonna do some baby marrows, get that on the grill quickly, drizzle it with some truffle oil, and then we can do our salad. Great. So I'm just gonna use my best friend over here, which is a mandolin. That is a very cool mandolin. <laughs> no mistakes on a mandolin, because you're always gonna get the same size. So I'm just gonna do a few strips of the baby marrow. Don't try this at home. Except if you use a guard, that does come in the box. And uh, then I'm gonna put these straight onto the grill. Already lots of flavors on the grill. Then I'm just gonna add some of my lovely friend over here. Where did your love with truffle oil begin? It was with my chef that trained me in Cape Town that never allowed me to touch the truffle oil. <laughs> so as soon as I became qualified enough, I always wanted to know why. And eventually, I, I, right now, I do know why. It's the smell, the di distinctiveness in the flavor. It's the thickness of the oil, that amazing truffle taste. And I put it literally on everything. And for me, it works. I'm sure it's gonna work for you as well. It's definitely one of my favorites too, so I'm glad we have that in common. That's amazing. I'm just gonna pop some on the baby marrow now. I'm just gonna toss that around just so it gets cooked on the other side as well. I, I want it to be kind of uneven. That's why I haven't set them out all neat and tidy. I don't wanna make it too fancy. We don't wanna go too intricate. It is a braai after all. Okay, so we're gonna start plating our salad now. Straight in here, a bit of pea tendrils. Spread out. Got some nice rocket here as well. I'm gonna put a touch of Persian blue salt on that. 
So I'm just gonna grab the crayfish, put that straight onto the plate. Nice color on the baby marrow there. And then with the tomatoes, because there's no dressing on the salad, as we put them down, we wanna pop them. That's a neat trick. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop a lemon cheek. When you do that, no seeds. Oh, lovely. So first we'll squeeze, we'll leave it there. Touch of truffle oil over the entire dish. Can never have enough truffle oil. You can never have enough truffle oil. On. It looks divine. So nothing left for you to do except for taste. I can't wait. You should try the tomatoes first. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go for. Mm, that's so zesty, I love it. And now, the part I've been waiting for, I'm gonna go for this one over here. That is absolutely divine. So, so, so good. As much as I would love to finish this entire plate of food, I think we need to start with our meaty dishes. Let's do that. I see we've got a beautiful piece of lamb here. How are we going to prepare it? In a dirt ticker style, but my ticker style. Yay, let's get going. We're going to put some of our dry spice. So I'm only going to use the seeds and not too much of the whole spices. The last thing you want is to get too many bombs in there. Definitely. So, then I'm gonna do some of my masala. I'm just gonna sprinkle a touch of that, not all over the meat, because the fat's gonna melt on the grill and it's gonna, the spices are gonna melt into the meat. I'm gonna do a touch of cumin. And then I'm gonna add a layer of my plain yogurt now. I'm just gonna spread it out with a spoon, so it mixes up with the spices a little bit. Then I'm gonna finish that off with a touch of tomato paste and we're going to put that straight onto the grill. Such a beautiful colour. So I'm done with that, I'm going to put it straight onto the grill now. Fat side down. I'm just going to add a bit of fire there because we want the fat to melt a little bit. And now I'm going to start with the veggies. We'll do the mushrooms last because it's a succulent, so we don't want it to take all the liquid that we put into the bowl. Okay. So we're going to do a few of the baby butternuts, some baby gems, some vine ripe tomatoes. I'm gonna pop some salt on those. Your favorite and my favorite. Yay! <laughs> a nice truffle oil, nice pinch of masala. So you're gonna make sure the grill's nice and hot. Okay. So you get some nice pretty lines on these ones and we're gonna pop them on one by one. Okay. So I'm gonna add the last one or two pieces. I'm gonna add some fire to that. Oh, I almost forgot the beautiful mushrooms. Oh, yes. I'm just going to toss that around quickly in this lovely mix that we got. Okay, mushrooms are very succulent, so it's obviously taking away all this liquid, but it should sweat out a bit on the fire. I'm going to pick these up and I'm going to put them straight onto the grill. So I'm just going to give my lamb a quick turn, and then we're going to go straight into the chicken. Okay. As you can see, the chicken's partially cooked. That's because we had it sous vide for about five hours and I had my tandoori mixture in the sous vide bag with the chicken. And then I had some chopped chili, some cumin, some tomato paste, a bit of my dry mixture, some coconut milk and some yogurt. So I'm gonna put the chicken on the grill. Okay, so I'm gonna put a nice squeeze of lemon on there. Okay, we're gonna let that go for a little while before I flip it over. I'm gonna just let the lamb rest for a little while. So you don't want to play with the chicken too much or turn it around too much. Obviously because it's been sous vide for a very long time so it'll start to fall apart and I want it to keep its shape. I'm just going to put on the potato batonets that I have and season them a little bit while the because the chicken's almost done. I'm going to put some cumin on it as well. Just to add a nice smoky cumin murku flavor. I'm going to remove the other veggies while the potatoes are warming up. Here we go. Thank you. So as you can see, the chicken's quite tender now. So I'm gonna turn it, but I'm gonna be quite gentle when I turn it. No. Okay, so now that's done, I'm gonna try to take a seat and I'm gonna bring the meals over to you. Yay, thank you. Cool. All that remained was for Sylvester to perform some skillful plating to enhance the visual appeal.
Okay, we got a nice platter here. Wow, that looks incredible. Be my guest, you can go. I want all of those delicious things over there. I've been waiting all day to try the sous vide chicken. Sylvester, what do you love most about a braai? Certainly has to be bringing the family together, eating a nice meal around a big table with everybody there. Mine too, but I have to say, this is definitely my idea of the perfect braai. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure.